Welcome to Send It John Boats. In today's video, we're going to be prepping our 1648 John Boat for paint. And trust me, this is the worst paint removal I have ever done on a boat. Oh my God, this boat has so much freaking paint. But we're going to test a whole bunch of different methods of paint removal and show you which one I ended up using on this boat. Send it. If you like John Boats, mud motors, and things that just make you want to yell, yeah, yeah then you've come to the right place, partner. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you go right down here, hit that subscribe button and the little bell thingy right next to it so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. So this video originally appeared on my Hydrographics channel way back in the day when we started doing this project. So the video footage is a little bit older, but if you're following along with Project Bottomland Bateau from beginning to where we are now, this will catch you up and get you ready for the paint video that we're about to be dropping. Because the paint job on this boat is like super cool. You don't want to miss it either. I will at the end of the video, if you stick all the way around to the end, I will talk a little bit about paint that we tried and the little experiment that we did to see if it would work and the giant epic fail that followed. So make sure you stick around to the end for that. And of course the bloopers, you, know, you don't want to miss those. They're freaking hilarious. So let's jump in our YouTube time machine real quick and go way back to the beginning of the summer in 2020 when I originally started prepping for the paint job on this boat. So the first thing that we're going to need before we can paint our boat is something to cover the boat. I found this really cheap canopy on Amazon. It was like 160 bucks. I'll leave a link to it down in the description box below. But it's one of the cheapest ones I could find that actually had halfway decent quality. So our canopy is going to do a couple of things. One is going to help keep dust and dirt and debris from falling like out of these pine trees and landing in our fresh paint job. It's also going to give us some shade so that we don't have to worry about direct sunlight messing with the dry time on the paint. So before we can start on our new paint job for the boat, we've got to get all the old paint off first. So there's a ton of different ways that you can go about removing paint off the boat. I want to try the easy way first. We're gonna use some chemical paint strippers. I've never tried any of these before. I don't have any affiliation with any of these products. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try all four of these, see which one works best. And then once I figure that out, I'll go through and strip the rest of the paint off the boat. So here's our lineup of paint strippers that we're gonna be trying out today. These first two are both made by Clean Strip. This first one is Quick Strip. It's just a regular paint stripper. The second one is what they call their premium line paint stripper. I don't know what the difference is, but we're gonna try them both side by side. This next one over here is one that a lot of people swear by. It's aircraft paint stripper. They took the old formula and have changed it and they removed one compound out of it. It's called methyl chloride. So this is now non-methyl chloride version. From what I've heard, it does not work as good as the old version, but we're gonna give it a shot and see. And then this last one over here we're gonna try is called citrus strip. This is the one that you find everywhere. It's non-toxic, it's supposed to be great for the environment. We're gonna give it a shot and see how it works as well. So here's how I'm gonna test out these paint removers. I'm gonna tape off four equal sections on this side of the boat. I'm gonna apply each section with a different paint stripper. Then I'll go through and cover everything with a plastic drop cloth. We'll wait a couple hours, come back and see how they work. All right, so it's been a few hours. I'm going to go through and test each one with this little plastic paint scraper. This first one we're going to be trying is the Quick Strip Fast Paint and Varnish Stripper. All right, so this stuff kind of worked. It took the first layer off, but not the under layers. But I don't know, not a whole lot, not super impressed. So let's move on to the next one. So this next one that we're testing out is the Clean Strip Premium Stripper. We're going to see if it's any better. Looks like when I sprayed it, this one over here sprayed a little thicker. This one sprayed a little thinner. Um, also, you can tell it didn't quite stick to the plastic as good as I was hoping, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. All right, so the premium stripper, eh, not so premium. It got off even less paint than the original one. All right, let's move on to the aircraft stripper and see if it was any better. All right, so now we got the aircraft paint stripper. Let's give it a shot and see what happened. So all our aircraft paint stripper did was just dry on the surface. It didn't even hardly take any of the paint off. So another big waste of time. Hopefully citrus strip worked great because all the rest of these have sucked. So citrus strip was only slightly better than the aircraft remover, but it still sucks. So back to the drawing board. So yeah, paint strippers were kind of a giant epic fail. Now, I'm not going to blame this completely on the paint strippers themselves. This boat had a lot of layers of paint, and what the paint stripper was doing is it would only kind of take off one layer at a time, but because the paint was so old, I'm not really sure what kind of paint it was. It just wasn't doing a fast enough job for me to be really worth my time and worth the money spent on the different kind of paint strippers. So that brings us to plan B, which is to sandblast the boat. I do have a Harbor Freight sandblaster. It works pretty well. It's one of the 110 pound pressurized blasters. It does take a very, very large compressor to run. It uses a ton of air, but it does work really, really well for removing paint 
that's really thick, such as what we have on the Jumbo. The media I like to use in this particular sandblaster is the Tractor Supply, I believe it's called Black Diamond. It's a fine grit, it comes in a red and gray bag. It works really well for removing paint from aluminum at about anywhere between 50 and 80 PSI. I didn't have any issues, it wasn't pitting the aluminum at all. It's relatively inexpensive. It's about nine bucks a bag normal, but you can get it on sale sometimes if you got a coupon for about seven, eight dollars, somewhere in that range. I think I went through a total of about 14, 15 bags through this entire project. As far as time goes, it was much quicker to use the sandblaster. The actual time that I spent sandblasting was only maybe a couple of hours at the most. I spent most of my time trying to collect as much of the sandblast material that had fallen on the tarp underneath the boat and you know filtering it out and putting it back in the sandblaster, refilling it. So once you fill it and you actually start blasting, you usually get, depending on the pressure, somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes of blast time before I had to stop and refill it. So the Harbor Freight Sand Blaster is not the most efficient tool for this particular job, but it's what I had, it worked, and the results were exactly what I needed. Welcome back to the present. It is October 2020 now. All the boat prep is done. It is ready to start painting. And against my better judgment, I was like, eh, you know, it's been like 75 degrees during the day. I'm just getting around like mid 60s at night. We'll go ahead and give it a shot paint the boat, see what happens. So we're going to get into a lot more detail when we actually talk about the paint video. I'll go through all of this epic fail and tell you all about it. But basically what I did is I picked a day where it was going to be like 75 during the day. And I think the low temperature that night was like 63, 64. Went ahead and put the primer on, went ahead and base coated it. Everything went fine. So it waited a couple days for everything to dry. Went ahead and scuffed the boat up, got it ready to put the stencils on. I called my buddy Josh. He comes over. He's going to help me hold up the stencils on the side of the boat. So that way I didn't have to flip the boat over just to paint the sides and then flip it back over again to paint the inside. I just wanted to do it all in one shot. So my buddy Josh comes over. He's going to hold up the stencils for me so I can paint everything. Things were going to work out great. So there was two big issues that we ran into that just made this an absolute epic fail and I've got to start all over now. The first issue was with the boat sides being, you know, kind of at a steep downward angle like this, it was almost impossible to get the stencils to lay flat up against the boat without some type of adhesive. So what was happening is we would go in and do a little painting. It would blow up underneath the stencils and just had overspray everywhere. It looked like absolute crap. And against my better judgment, I was like, well, let's just keep going and see what happens. So as we continued to paint the boat, the air temperature just kept dropping a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more until it got to the point to where it was like in the low 60s. And as we were spraying, the paint was just turning into like a thick gel. It would not dry at all. So the outside of the stencil got coated in this like jelly paint grossness and we could not get it off. I tried wiping it with lacquer thinner and it was even a bigger mess than I really signed up for. So we are scrapping the whole idea of using the Mylar stencils that you hold up on the side of the boat. I've got a whole nother idea of we're going to have to take the boat into a shop where it's going to be nice and warm overnight so that I can go ahead and get this stupid thing painted because I am ready to build the motor. Like, I'm so excited. I'm ready for it. Like, I, I want to start right now. But we got to get the boat paint done first. After we finish the boat paint video, hopefully I'll have it up here in a couple weeks. We're going to move into the slick bottom coating that's going on the bottom of the boat, and then it will be motor time. Now, we're going to roll those bloopers for you here in just a second because I know you all want to see that. But let us take a second and always remember... Money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. Bye, guys. Here's what I'm gonna do: to test out these paint strippers. We're gonna strip. We're gonna strip. We're gonna, we're gonna strip. <laughs> I like the Tractor Supply Ultra Fine. I think it's called Ultra Fine. I'm Ultra Fine. Yeah. Dust and dirt and like pine straw from falling out of the sky. Well, it's not gonna just fall out of the sky randomly. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what kind of paint is on this boat, so that kind of leaves a mystery right there. Otherwise, I would just use whatever it is that's um, that that would take the, the paint off, because that would be the smart thing to do. And microphone not even pointed in the right direction. There we go. That brought us to plan B, which was what which was watch was watch 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 was. What well, was the night before Christmas? This video hitting that subscribe. Really? Every time. It never fails. I hit that record button and someone calls me. Hello. The last one over here is. What is this crap called? Cit citrus. Citrus? Citrus strip. Citrus strip. 
Citrus trip. Sit. I don't know. Towns of media. Um. I'm not supposed to say um. I'm supposed to say um.